Welcome to Joa Fitness Health Wellness Video Podcast, a space to ignite your day through positive conversations. We bring people that have created excellence in their life, sharing high vibration in their reawakening path. into and when we, we start a new path we don't know how it's going to all work out so um i felt compelled to write the book my last name is bragg so for so long you know when i was young about my daughter's age i'd get oh are you gonna brag about it and it was very put down like it was not a common common it was not a compliment at all it was a put down and so when you're successful i learned really quickly that it was a negative for other people and my success bothered other people. And so I realized that I would hide myself and I wouldn't talk about my successes. Hello, hello, happy, happy Friday to everybody. It is so exciting to have you back into Alignment Podcast. We have been running this podcast since 2018. It's been so many years with so many guest speakers. And today we have a great influencer, I would say, at this point, just because we do have this um, social media um, attachment now. And we love to have people like Lisa Brock, who is a journalist. It is also a female leader that is actually bringing this new approach of how to embrace uh, our our achievements and how to bring ourselves into a way that we don't have any shame on bragging rights. Yes, bragging rights. Also coming as her last name, Bragg. Definitely this is part of her purpose and her journey. And uh, bragging rights actually uh, was for me very touching because last year I did eight events on woman empowerment and Lisa was there for us and it was so uh, empowering for us to hear her story how she transferred from being a journalist now to be literally traveling around the world with this book and bringing awareness about how we have to be our first sheet leaders in this path so thank you so much Lisa I know you're really busy and we finally got to be together after a few months when we met in person so thank you so much how are you today Oh, I am well. I am well. You know what? I'm just so grateful to be here. And I always love your energy. So I know you're a yoga, uh, yoga ini, is it? You're a yoga person and you just bring such energy. I think that would be one of my first tips is just show up as much as you can, when you can, with enthusiasm. It counts for so much. And that's what you always have is such great enthusiasm for whatever you do. So thank you for having me. Thank you, uh, Lisa. You are very humble, but you, at the same time, you have this awesome balance of being humble and also brag and why not to brag. And I have the same thing because I'm Latina and Latinos tend to be very proud of our own roots. We tend to always remember where we're coming from. We have all these songs where we call all the countries and people make fun of us a lot. And we love it because we love to be a spicy, a sparkle. We love to, for people to remember us. I think people really remember Latinos. And I actually love people from all over the world, but I am very proud of being uh, born in a country that brought me so much contrast of like poverty and corruption, at the same time being positive and able to like uh, thrive through resilience. So I know this is something that is part of my path and I love people like you that actually creates this platform and this space for us to feel, to feel that it's okay to, to brag when you are achieving, when you are excellent at what you do. Yeah, why not to say that? And thank you so much again for uh, for letting me know and also making me aware of this because not everyone sees that way. There is also creation of competition instead of collaboration. And there's so many topics that we can talk today, but I wanted to focus on uh, one really uh, a strong topic that we talk about social media, especially because one of my purpose, even though I'm a realtor, I'm also a yoga teacher and I have uh, this kind of desire of being a voice of those people that are abandoned, especially in places that they have no voice. And you know this as a journalist. Uh, I wanted to bring attention to also the kids that are growing with the social media in their hands and they don't know how, what's the, the, the norm, what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to like hide themselves or they're they supposed to be out there. So I wanted to talk about that for you. Uh, tell me a little bit about the journey of being uh, bringing this new approach of bragging rights and what has been the process on the audience coming to you and the reviews on Amazon. Tell, tell us a little bit about the first year with the launch. 
You know, it's been a journey. I didn't know what I didn't know. And I think everyone always thinks, oh, you should know what you're getting yourself into. And when we, we start a new path, we don't know how it's going to all work out. So um, I felt compelled to write the book. My last name is Bragg. So for so long, you know, when I was young, about my daughter's age, I'd get, oh, are you going to brag about it? And it was very put down. Like it was not a common comment. It was not a compliment at all. It was a put down. And so when you're successful, I learned really quickly that it was a negative for other people and my success bothered other people. And so I realized that I would hide myself and I wouldn't talk about my successes. And then oddly enough, though, I went into broadcast journalism. I thought, I think a part of it is that my parents were very um, quiet people. They were mechanics and uh, didn't really do, weren't really on the stage or anywhere at all. So they were very much homebodies. And I think I, I think part of it was that I wanted people to be seen and heard and not always the same people. And I think that's what was going on with journalism was that it was always the same people. And I think they get into a bit of a rut now or it's always the same people. And I always wanted other people to be seen and heard. And so I would go and talk to different people and say, hey, I think you're the expert. Let me put you on camera, interview you for this. And so often those people would say, oh, no, no, not me. Go down the hall to the usual suspects, Bob or John. And so when I had a chance to, you know, coach people and say, let's do it together. And they would, I'd get to see them go off and do great things. And then I owned one of Canada's first content companies and realized again, while I was helping them in the corporate world to get their subject matter experts online through video animation and e-learning that then the ex the uh, executives in charge of the initiatives would say to me, Lisa, how can I do this for myself? And so the answer isn't always just get on social media. And that's what so many people who are social media gurus and ninjas will tell you is just get on it. But the thing is, though, so many of us are taught to be hidden gems from when we're very young. And my international research showed me this and told me this because I thought I'm a I'm a white Canadian woman. Is it just me or is it so N1 or is it more people? And that's where I really wanted to understand what does it look like across the world where so much of the literature and the research right now already says, don't brag, don't talk about yourself, don't talk about your successes. You know, we have those sayings, if your work were that good, it would speak for itself or put your head down, do good work, and eventually someone will notice you. And those are reiterated over and over again on social media and maybe from your leaders, like just put your head down. But that doesn't work in this world that we live in today. And so that's where we need to tell our stories. And it doesn't necessarily mean on social media. It means on the mediums that you connect with and talking to the people that you want to get, I call it, get in their sun. But who do you need that, you know, it could be just that one person that needs to see your excellence, that you need their attention and you just work on getting that one person. So that's a little bit of the journey of how I got there. But with my last name, Bragg, it pretty much anchors it that I had to do something with it and realize that it is a universal problem that I am trying to solve for, that so many people feel it. And Joe, I'm just going to say, it's interesting, Latinas always, it's one of the groups that is very interesting to me. And I want to do more research because I was talking, I was doing an event, a workshop for a company and the head person um, behind the scenes was a Latina. And she said, oh, we always brag and self-promote. We're taught to be proud of our culture, very much what you said, and proud of who we are and let people know. But then it, the next day, I met another Latina who said, oh no, we never talk about ourselves. We never talk about our successes. It's very, you know, you just don't do that. We're all together. You know, what would your family say? And so she was on the opposite side of it. And it goes back to often, um, my research where it, some people in their families, they think it's okay. It's also along socioeconomic lines. So depending on your, where you come from financially and generationally, they're not allowed to play outside of the lines. So you very much feel like you're much more have to play in the lines. Don't break any rules. And so it's really nuanced mm -hmm. how it comes out. So that's why I always love talking to Latinas to see <laughs> which area, because you're also very polarized where mm -hmm. other people might be a little bit more of a rainbow. What do you think of what I just said? No, no, totally, Joe, totally right. Um, I mean, like for me, I, I feel that my biggest cheerleaders uh, have been my parents. They've been always supporting me, my crazy ideas. Uh, I was born in Caracas, in one of the poorest and the highest crime in the world city. 
I'm talking like I have seen robbery, I have seen shooting people. I, I actually saw a shooting uh, a bullet in the kitchen of my house when I was seven years old. So I've seen real crime and real violence. And, and I feel like in this crazy mess that I, I was actually brought up, I still have big dreams, you know? And I always came with these crazy ideas. When I was 15, I wanted to live in Australia. And I told my dad, I'm ready to go to Australia. He's like, are you crazy? Like, you don't even have a, a career. Uh, finish your first degree and then you go. And that's what I did. Um, I went to US, I ended up going at 30 to Australia. So I feel like my, I had a visionary mind from very young age, even though my environment wasn't really providing me um, that inspiration. I don't know where I was getting the inspiration, but from somewhere I was getting the inspiration. And I feel was also part of my dad's journey because he always said that he lives through me. So I feel like my parent has been a big part of bragging rights for me. He, they're being um, behind me, always, um, yeah, being my cheerleaders. I always yeah. felt that I have lived in Singapore, Australia, uh, Dubai now, and I uh, actually saw you in Abu Dhabi, and uh, I'm now living in Dubai, and I'm so excited that people from the North America side are actually traveling and bringing their ideas to, to this kind of world that is actually accelerating their in technology in leadership. So I also wanted to touch base on, about that, uh, about leadership. Just coming back into the book, I feel like uh, the book, it, for me, I, I got this download from a meditation in 2017 that has been changing the trajectory of my journey because I realized that I do have a gift and I do have a mission that it goes beyond my own desires. And, and it's very clear, it's like to create a leadership school. And I always tell this to everybody around me because it, it was a download from the universe. And I feel like bragging rights, it goes into leadership because you're not going to be a leader unless you um, become aware of your own talent. And you also tell people, this is my talent, hire me. This is my talent, um, support me. I need you, please collaborate. So I feel it's very important for us to use our voice in the biggest level possible because it's only one one chance. So this is our chance and you never know when you knock doors and when the door is gonna be open for you. And actually, to be honest, I love elders. I feel like when I, I when I go to elders, I feel they're always cheerleaders of young generations. They are actually brave and have the courage to to still dream in a world that is bringing so much uh, so much tragedy. I would say in a in a situation as we know that is coming war in so many parts of the world that we cannot ignore what's happening around. We still have the privilege to bring our voice out there. So I feel like the book for me is being very into leadership beyond anything. It's a it's a book that brings uh, leadership to the next level because it's actually telling us that we all leaders. And by you being a leader, you are guiding communities. You can actually influence communities. And for me, that's kind of like the biggest um, inspiration of the book. I know that you commented to that you are living in Canada and you're not coming from a family that is really out there. I'm wondering, like the same way as I'm telling you my story, as I think storytelling is one of the best ways to brag rights because it brings you back into your own um, origin and it tells you where you're coming from and telling the story to other people is not really bragging rights, it's literally telling how far have you been in the process. So I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit of the story of Lisa as a child and brag the rights, tell me your story and and how proud you are to to the point to now let's just bring some spotlight into yourself if you can actually tell us in a short three minutes your story yeah i kind of mentioned it off the beginning is really that you know owning and understanding that i had to make my own way and that as a young person i was getting i'd get great marks my parents you know were were nice people but didn't have that um worldly understanding and just didn't you know know what is available to them their hope was that i would you know just get a, an office job and they didn't understand when i wanted to become a journalist there was very much well from my family well why would you want to do that because it was just you know try to finish high school and they didn't understand post secondary and that's okay but for me you know i think i had teachers around me who saw what i could do i had a, like you i had a spark inside me and i realized self advocacy was something that i needed to do i had to put myself out there to get the opportunities that i wanted and that i saw 
you know, through TV or on a, like, that's how I became a journalist. I didn't have anyone in my family who was a, in journalism or anything like that. Um, I would just watch TV with my parents. They watched a lot of TV. And so I'd watch and I'd see these people telling stories. I'm like, I can do that. So I figured it out. And I think that's what it is. You have to figure it out and then have advocacy, self-advocacy. It is so much better when you have cheerleaders and mentors and sponsors and champions along the way, but it has to start with you because you could have a whole family of all of those awesome people and not do anything. We see a lot of celebrity children who don't do anything with all that yeah. awesomeness that they're given. So it's really up to you at the end of the day. And yes, there are systemic boundaries to, or barriers to a lot of people in the world that we live in now, but if you can start with yourself and then find allies, which I know we're, we're both great at finding those people that can help us, that's the way to do it. And knowing that you have that spark inside of you to, to give more, you know, I think that's the thing and, and just understanding what that spark is. So realizing for me, you know, it's, it's so hard to connect the dots as you're moving forward through life. But when you can look back and say, oh, there's the dots, you know, being a young person, uh, you know, going to journalism school, then becoming a journalist, then owning a content company, I can see the red thread of me wanting to help people be seen and be heard. So I think there's something to all of that. But, um, you know, I just, I didn't, uh, I didn't want to just, just settle. I think that there's so many things out there. And I think I'm still always trying to push myself to that next level. So I think that's what I would say is going back is just keep trying. And, um, you know, the people around you, they're doing the best they can and just keep trying to find that spark inside of you to move forward. So, so yeah. that's a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like, let's say if you could uh, mention two mentors and your very first age, I would say before 10 years old, do you remember a mentor, someone that you really look towards that um, kind of vision of where they were? It's like, if they did it, I can do it. Do you have some kind of mentor influence? No, I didn't have one when I was younger. I would just see people on TV and say, okay, that's who I should just follow and see what they were doing. And then I found out one of the people that I thought, I, I, there was a woman on a poster in the subway and uh, she looked kind of like me and she was in news. And then I found out she was just a, a fake model. She wasn't oh, okay. actually there. They yeah. didn't have women doing that role. And so <laughs> I found out afterwards she didn't exist. And so I was actually really disappointed in finding out that. But models or, or mentors young, no, I didn't have anyone. I know my daughter now at 14 does have a lot of people that she looks up to, but it wasn't really put on her horizon. There was just people who were at the level that we were at. And so we didn't really have, the people went to work, they got their paycheck and they were thankful for it. It was very much the factory mentality where you keep your head down, do good work uh, and got your paycheck. So that young, no, I didn't have any mentors, but um, highly believe that we all need mentors through books and through different things. I guess that's the thing. I had mentors in books. Um, I loved the Canadian classic Anne of Green Gables, which, you know, how does that apply to the business or leadership world? I think it with that, she found resiliency the main character and she found resiliency she made things happen she was stubborn to make her own world a reality and i think that that did help me as a as a young person and do you actually consider yourself a mentor in this path in this like at least in this moment do you feel that you are a mentor Oh, I know I'm a mentor. Yeah, I, I absolutely. You have to own that. So no, I'm a mentor. Oh, I, I have I'm many. Just, like brag have, yourself, to yourself. Uh, no, I have many thank you cards. Uh, I just met with an ultra fan the other day who just told me all what my book has done for her. So no, that I'm absolutely a mentor. I'm, I'm a visionary in this space because visionary is where you can take something that is either brand new, cutting edge, or something that's controversial and really put a new spin on it. And because I've really put a new spin on something that's controversial, you know, because bragging is very controversial. Bragging is about talking about one's successes with pride, but the reframe is that pride also means self-love. And that's why we need to brag. And talking about our successes, bragging, allows the world to know how you are meant to serve. And because of that, then we're not letting the mediocre people get ahead. We are the ones who are getting ahead, the one that can serve you the best. And so I'm getting the thank you notes. I'm getting the 
Amazon reviews. So people are enjoying the book. I need to get more people to enjoy the book because it really does have that universal appeal. But I think it's, um, I'm going to stand in that and make sure that I own when somebody gives me a compliment and somebody thanks me for the book. That is one of the biggest joys that I have is when people thank me for the book. And so I hope it it um, is around to mentor, be a mentor in a book. If they can't meet me personally through my workshops or my events, then they can at least have the mentor in the book that uh, it is. And this this person that I just met, she's like, Lisa, meeting you. It was like the book came alive in front of me. So I was like, Oh, oh, that's so lovely. So she sent yeah. me a thank you note. So yeah. Yeah, no, no, it's a perfect time to bring these type of books to, we, we do need leadership and leadership starts in a small communities. I truly believe that. Like, even though my vision is a global vision, the only way for me to start is to start building this huge Burj Khalifa in my mind is by putting brick by brick and the foundation is so important. So I want people to know always the foundation of where I'm coming from. Uh, what are my needs? What are my struggles? I'm super vulnerable. Uh, even in my last event, I literally had to stop and breathe because I was going to just cry out of the 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 energy I was feeling in that moment of uh, embracing the power of being around 40 women with the same desire. So I feel like this is so super, super important to embrace um, the potential through uh, actually as a storytelling that you're telling us in the book. Is, is, I believe mentorship stars by guiding people, right? So you are guiding people for those readers, you're guiding people. Every time you are in front of people telling a story, you're guiding people, you are redirecting people in their journey, especially if they are a little bit um, in low vibration. I wanted to know the experience being Abu Dhabi. I mean, did you go also to the UAE or on, I mean, to the whole UAE or only Abu Dhabi? Uh, I went to Abu Dhabi and then I went to uh, Qatar. I went to Doha. So oh, uh, I have a there friend is, there. Yeah, and because I think there is a misconception from this part of the world um, related to the the Middle East countries and how women are actually positioned there. So now that you just came back from the UAE and Qatar, which are places that are thriving for excellence, can you please tell us uh, uh, what was your experience? I felt really welcome there. So for Abu Dhabi, I was at Know Your Value, which is a very big international women's event. And it was a lot of fun, met women from all over the world. So a lot of us were in the Middle East for the first time. I have to tell you, I was nervous because we don't hear a lot and see a lot and know a lot about travel there. And I was going all by myself. It was, uh, but I felt as soon as I got there, I felt great. I felt very safe. I felt... Um, Love. I felt very privileged though to be yeah. there. And I think that's where you do realize privilege and understanding how it works there a little bit more. I think it's interesting, but I felt um I felt really embraced. It's a very multicultural uh, experience of people from all over the world. So I think that was that was really neat. I met uh, ambassadors and uh, such a, a wide range of people there. You know, people who are just young. Um, you know, twenty four year olds, twenty two year olds getting going and you know winning the Forbes thirty under thirty because they're doing spectacular things all over the world. But it was interesting. It was um, you know we were out in different sukkahs and restaurants and uh, felt uh, felt great and felt for sure that the work of bragging rights was valued. There was people who, who were interested in bringing me over to Dubai. So hopefully that happens yeah. where I can come and bring the message of bragging rights. I hope to see you there for sure. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Moment. And then Doha was great too. It was um, a little bit more conservative where I was. And uh, so it was interesting to see that. I didn't feel concerned about anything with Doha. I felt uh, happy to be there. And the I was mostly with the expat community. So a lot of expats came to my book reading event and really embraced the ideas of it. So I think, you know, it's always getting out of our zone and you've done it living in all those places all over the world. Like that's part of it is that we are now international people. Even if you are just in your, com behind your computer, in your hometown, wherever that is, you're also an international person now because of all this technology. And that's really why we need to be seen and be heard because they're not going to find you if you're living in, tiny, you know, part of, even if you're living in Toronto, people aren't internationally, aren't going to find you 
if you're not out talking about yourself, because we don't have our grandmothers, our nonas, our aunties, our you know relatives talking about our successes for us nowadays. We are now connected to the global economy. So how do we get it out there to somebody in Dubai that they do need to have my book or somebody in Singapore or wherever it is that they need to have bragging rights so that they can then achieve the successes that they are meant to achieve and already deserve. So that's, uh, I love that you have such an international lens. It's so great for all of us. Yeah, no, like, to be honest, I, the thing is like, I feel so welcoming everywhere, mostly. And, um, I don't feel any, any kind of rejection so far, uh, it's being love. It's being, like you say, uh, very general, uh, big, generous heart, very generous heart. Um, and uh, I also wanted to to share a little bit of the, for me, what I have touched me when I was reading the book, uh, Breaking Rights, there was a segment that you say that you have to give yourself permission to talk about something that you feel proud of. So I will encourage you, they are cooking now, they're driving now, listening to this podcast with Lisa Brax and myself, to take time to actually revalue your journey up to now and remember those moments and be proud of yourself. It could be when you when you actually had your first baby, um, maybe when the baby graduated. It could be the first time that you travel to a particular continent that you were looking towards. Um, it could be actually when you forgive somebody. It is such a hard thing for us to to accept our mistakes or simply to let go and surrender and, and just like forgive people. I think that's a big one, right? Like, so we tend to be very into like, I'm right. So I, I feel like it's good to be proud when we are actually evolving and we becoming lighter and less compli complicated in our mind because at the end, the stories in our mind are only for us. So it's better just to like, let go. So I think it's important to give permission to feel proud of, about our, our achievements and no matter what achievement means to you it's important to have that moment i also feel like celebrate is like you were commenting celebrate your achievements as little as they are it could be us uh taking a walk out for 30 minutes that you don't actually have that time to do or like going out there and have a glass of wine or whatever means to you celebration it's important to celebrate your achievements um and another one in the page 29 uh, that I wrote, it was uh, today's work will position you. It will position your legacy well into the future. So if you actually think about any leader that you admire or any type of uh, figure that you admire, that person took certain type of steps, certain type of structures and a lot of work through the process to be able to get where they are. It hasn't been just a gift uh, with no work and efforts. So it's important to, 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 for you always to visualize, oh, wow, my today's work in this case, in my case, having a talk with Lisa Bragg is taking me out there for my biggest purpose. Uh, and I think that's something that we always have to remember instead of just looking to the end goal, just to remember that today's work is actually setting your legacies. That also uh, touched my heart because um, I think because I meditate every morning at five in the morning. Uh, I always remind myself that just be, because I'm able to breathe at five in the morning, it gives me that that I, you can you still can do it. You're still alive. You still can do it. There is still a chance to get this vision alive. You know. So thank you again for reminding us that. And the other one is it is time to normalize for everyone talking about success. And I invite you to have conversations with your friends. Talk about your success. Listen to other successes and embrace them. I, what I love doing is when I meet friends that they don't know each other, I bring them in a circle and I tell them, guys, you got to listen. This girl, you don't imagine, she's awesome. She has this boutique. She creates this for this. This one, and then I invite, I introduce everybody like superstars. Like, and everybody, That's beautiful. Whoa. And they yeah. to know each other because I bring right away what I admire from them. Maybe they don't even know, but I admire that from them. I sometimes I even say, this is the girl that you have to reach if you want to raise your vibration. She's going to make you dance. She's going to bring your energy up. And maybe she never realized that's, that's her gift. Or like, you know what? She's a great listener. When you need somebody to talk about anything, she's there for you. So I always- What's so beautiful about that is that you're helping your friends and the people coming into your life come in as a 10. 
And yeah. that so often we'll enter a room or we'll start a new job and we won't want to come in as a 10 or we'll think I should diminish myself so they won't have too many expectations or I don't want to shine brightly because I'm afraid that then what will happen from that? Because so, so often we're afraid of our own light. And so when you as the host comes in and gives everyone, you're all a 10 and here's why, that is a huge gift. And as leaders, having people come into our organizations, having people and talking them up and not making them climb up is such a gift because you've already hired them. And if they're a woman, they're probably already overqualified for the job. And so talking about people at the 10 level, zero to 10, giving them that 10 already just allows all of us to then go even further. And the more we can go together, the easier the journey it will be. So that's beautiful yeah. that you do it. And it's called a brag circle. It's getting everyone together. The next step is to getting them to talk about things that are their own desires, their own successes and what they think make them great and what they're grateful for. Cause that's where we have to talk about why we are great, but then also along with it, why we are grateful. And so how, combining those practices then elevates everyone. And then you learn a little bit more about what they're up to and uh, never yeah. know how you can use them. So yeah, those are great. Yeah, I love the name. I'm going to actually call it. Let's do a brag circle, my friends. Let's do it. I like that. I like that. Um, no, it's, it's, it's exciting. Um, I, I love people around me just because I know everyone has a gift that is different than mine. So I'm always curious about what's your gift because I'm pretty clear about mine. I'm not bragging. <laughs> no, exactly. yeah. Exactly. But you are, and you know what? It's okay to brag. And so the word that we actually don't like is self-aggrandizement. Self-aggrandizement, in my journalism days, we called that a $5 word, would probably be a $500 word nowadays. But it's that big word that is that puffery, that ickiness, that I'm better than you, that only one person can win. And that's what we feel off-putting on social media. The interesting part about it too, though, is that it's context-based. If you, when you are talking about your successes, if you are in a room of other successful people, they don't hear anything as boasting or self-aggrandizement. Well, self-aggrandizement, they do hear Cause if I'm better, if I'm saying I'm better than you, we all hear that. Yeah. But it's that we don't feel when it's in context, you and I talking as leaders and traveling the world, you, you know, I was on a plane once and I was listening to these women talk about all their journeys. And part of me at first was like, oh, who do they think they are? It's like, they're talking about all their successes. But the reality is, is that the rest, like that was my insecurities and not theirs. And so that's where it's context-based. Who are you talking to? That's what matters versus um, when you realize who's in the room, they don't necessarily think that you're bragging. So that's that's a big part of it. Yeah, so basically choose wisely who are you around so they can actually enhance you, elevate you and inspire you at the same time. Um, because we're about to finish this conversation. I know, Lisa, we can speak so much because we do have a very similar uh, character. We're both visionaries. We both uh, love sisterhood because we actually met in Corralos, which is a beautiful organization that is a global organization. Um, and we definitely have a very similar uh, path. And we're here back into alignment constantly, coming back into alignment and coming back to support our, our community. Uh, I wanted to ask you as a visionary, do you see yourself doing like summits about bragging rights? Uh, how do you see yourself in 2024? Something like it will give you a bigger reach to people. And how can I help you to, to make this happen? I firstly want to invite everybody to get to buy the bragging rights book. You can choose the place. I would just go for the easy Amazon. <laughs> Uh, you can go anywhere to find the book. And as soon as you read one chapter, just give a review of at least of the first chapter because reviews are really important for all the authors to know and to receive those warm messages about what we are getting from the book. So please go in to get the book. Also follow uh, Lisa in her social media uh, channels. And I will also add it on the chat box for everyone to follow and click her, um, her social media channels. And yeah, tell me a little bit about the 2024 before we complete our conversation today. Yeah, thank you. I think a lot of it, I've been mostly in the B2B space, so working in corporates, but I'm hearing more and more people want me to do a public open event. So do you want me to do one? <laughs> in Dubai, yes, I would love to. I will uh, actually will make it. I will move pieces when we can make it. I would love to have you for sure. 
Would love to do that. So, you know, I'm looking for those relationships to say, come to my organization, come to my area and, and we can do a co-event or do something together. I think those are fabulous to do. And then I'm looking to do some more virtual events too, just to get people to understand the book and why it's so necessary in the world that we live in today. So I think the first step is go get the book. Uh, if, you know, it's available everywhere. And then let's see what else we can do with building it. But 2024, I've been working a lot with corporations to get the message out because they realize the value of making sure that their employees, their teams talk about success and get the opportunities they already deserve. So employee engagement. Then I'm also looking to see what does it look like to host events either online and in a for B2C. So yeah. one to many. And that's where I'm trying to grow my channels. And I'm starting a newsletter that I'm committing myself to, to sending. So <laughs> yeah. it's all the things that, you know, you want to do because you want to give, you know, if you can't afford the book, I also have a lot of resources online that are available, but I think it's just making sure that you're available to people wherever they are on their journey in lots of places. So, but if you would love me to come, I'm happy to hear from you. You can go to my website. It's Lisa Bragg with two G's, lisabragg.com. And you can follow me on uh, social media. I'm either Lisa Bragg or that Lisa Bragg in most social channels. So and I Lisa Bragg says you. you like you, you they're cooking, you they're driving, you they're there and got inspired with this beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful story. And again, like she commented, it's not about competition. It's about collaboration. We're here. We all have different gifts. It's up to you to open your own gift and to share with everyone. And I'm so excited for this 2024. I'm totally, uh, I totally see you out there in front of people, telling the stories, touching more hearts and bragging rights. Have a beautiful day, my friends. And remember that together we are a stronger. We invite you to subscribe to this channel and share with your community. Please leave comments below. And if you like the episode, click the like button. Have a beautiful day.